Hello everyone. Today I am going to teach you the basics of CMOS design for a given logic function or a Boolean function. So CMOS is complementary metal oxide semiconductor. We can implement any logic or Boolean functions using this CMOS logic. Now we can see how this logic functions can be implemented using CMOS. Consider a function f is equal to a b plus c into d the whole bar in order to implement this function easily we can follow some rules so rule number one check the given function carefully make sure that your function is under the main complement chain in some cases you will have a function without the complete complement chain for example f is equal to a bar plus b c plus d bar there is no whole bar. This is not a complete complement chain. In this case, after completing your circuit with NMOS and PMOS, you need to add a sub CMOS inverter at the end. That CMOS inverter should be included at the end. Here no issues. Our logic is AB plus C into D the whole bar. It is under the complete complement chain. So, rule number two. Any CMOS network will have a topology like this. On the top, you will have power rail carrying supply voltage that is VDD. At the bottom, you will have a ground rail that is ground potential VSS. Between these two, we have two networks. A PMOS network that is group of PMOS transistors that is very near to the power rail. And one more network that is NMOS network near to the ground rail. PMOS network is also known as pull-up network and NMOS network is known as pull-down network. Then make sure that all the source of NMOS network is connected to the ground rail and the source of PMOS network to the power rail. Finally connect the drain of PMOS and NMOS together and you can take output from this point. Then the inputs of the network is given from the gates of NMOS and PMOS. You may show the gates of NMOS and PMOS according to the type of inputs. In our case, our function is AB plus C into D the whole bar. And the number of inputs will be 4 here. That is A, B, C and D. Next, rule number 3. So we need to implement NMOS and PMOS networks. First, we can check the rules to implement the NMOS network. If two variables are in multiplication, then the NMOS transistor should be connected in series. For example, say f is equal to a into b. Here the inputs are a and b, so there will be two inputs. So we need two NMOS transistors. Since the logic is in multiplication, we need to connect these two NMOS transistors in series just like this at the gates we will provide the inputs a and b okay next if your logic is addition of two variables then the nmos transistors should be connected in parallel for example f is equal to a bar plus b here the inputs are a bar and b two inputs so we need two nmos transistors since the logic is addition, we need to connect these two NMOS transistors in parallel, just like this. Make sure that they are connected in parallel. At the gates, you will provide the inputs A bar and B. Is it clear? Okay. In our case, the logic is AB plus C into D the whole bar. For CMOS, we need PMOS and NMOS networks. At this stage, I will implement the function using NMOS. The number of NMOS required are equal to the input variables, that is equal to 4, because 4 number of variables are there. We can start from the left side of the function, that is first 
a into b since it is multiplication they will be in series okay inputs are a and b then a b plus c it is a into b plus there is sum with c so we will draw another n mos parallel to a into b because it is a b summation c and input is c to the gate terminal then one more variable is there there is b the function is a b plus c into d the whole bar again multiplication capital d to the existing terms so we will draw one more n mos transistor and that will be in series to the existing network so the n mos network is completed next is rule number 4 so far we have discussed about the placement of n mos network next we can draw the p mos network the placement of p mos transistors are completely opposite to the n mos this reverses the rules of n mos here also in p mos the number of p mos required are exactly equal to the number of inputs that remains same but if i have two variables in multiplication say example f is equal to a into b then the implementation will be not in series but in parallel for p mos transistors just the opposite of n mos inputs to the gates that is a and b respectively so this will give the output of the function f is equal to a into b now consider if you have two variables for addition say f is equal to a plus b then the implementation for this will be two p mos transistors in series not in parallel our function is a b plus c into d the whole bar how will you implement this logic using p mos transistors okay we can start from the left side of the function it is first a into b so we need to draw two p mos transistors in parallel okay then plus c that is a p mos transistor in series to the network finally into d that is again a p mos transistor in parallel to the existing network now we can complete the cmos circuit diagram we will draw the power rail and ground rail then we need to follow the topology i will draw the pmos network near to the power rail combine all the source terminals and connect to the ground terminal then for pmos network connect the source terminal to the voltage supplier then from the drain of pmos and nmos networks we can take the out from this junction okay then if you want or you can also show the common input terminals you can do it or you can just leave like this it is completely okay in the next session i will teach you how to draw the layout from the circuit diagrams okay thank you for watching